friends, Molly from Art of Nature back today. We're gonna do another crazy wild wreath today. We're going to um, move out of this sort of just botanical and antler feather and we're gonna start to do some wreaths that incorporate vintage items. So today we are going to make a fly fishing themed wreath. This is just a vintage fly fishing creel that I purchased somewhere along the line. I don't know. I've used them for years. So we're gonna put this on the wreath and then we're gonna add an old bamboo fly rod and we're gonna sort of nestle this wreath so it looks like we found it on the side of a creek. Okay, so obviously the biggest um, object as we now know if you've been watching my videos, big objects go on first. Okay, how are we gonna get this on here? I'll suggest some wire. Okay, here we go, here we go. Super lightweight, don't need to put any sort of serious wire in it, but it's a little tricky to wire these on. So we obviously need to get these two points on the wreath. We're gonna put it at an angle. And so what we need to do is empty the, the something, whatever was in there out. Kind of hard, but you would fish the wire through it wherever you can. And sometimes it's easier said than done, just from the natural um, weaving of this split bamboo, I think it is. So I poke it through wherever I can make it work. <clears throat> if I can make it work. There's two pieces. Okay, so get your, get your wire through this first, and then we'll find a place to attach it to the wreath. This one is so old it actually does have some holes. Some of them like this weave, it is so difficult even to poke a piece of wire through that, but that is just a stunning trio. Let's see, we're on this side, aren't we? Poke that through there somewhere. I see daylight, there has to be a hole. There we go, there's one. There's one, there's one, there's one. Let's see if we can get another one through. There we go. So this sort of started, this idea is um, my grandfather, who is long past, but he uh, loved to fish. And he gave me his creel. And I actually used it as a purse for a long time. Okay, so the wire is through. We put one piece through the center of the wreath here. We put one, or on this side, we put one through the center of the wreath over here. So now we're just gonna attach it. We're obviously going to have to do the top as well so it doesn't do this. Or maybe we could put some glue, but I hate to put glue on quite yet. Don't forget when we twist the wire, we bend it in so our fingers don't take the end of it. This was one of my less than quality jobs of wrapping the Artemisia. One of the oops days, I think we called it, an oops day, an oops job. Okay, I'm gonna tie that off. A lot of excess here of wire, but I'm gonna wrap that up in. We'll cover that with foliage. Okay, yeah, I think we should do one more over here. And granted, I have some scrap wire there, but it's not quite long enough. So we'll just take a piece that I have loose on the bend. And I'm just going to get this down in here a little better. So the top won't fall forward. I've um, done these really, really large that actually have had waders on them as well. And the net and the whole thing. Okay, the creel is on. We're not gonna worry about this because it's gonna sit upright anyway, so it's not gonna go anywhere. And that's sort of like, this is gonna be the top, so it's really gonna be angled right there, okay? That's on. Next, it's 
salal leaf. Let me grab some. And here we go. Big object, big product. Right? You want to really give this a lot of length. So I'm leaving some long stems to start with, and then we'll do the short ones after we get the length we want in it. Okay. We're going to put a, a, the bamboo, which is a, an antique as well, fly uh, fishing rod on here. Some bird nests, we'll put feathers, we'll, we'll touch it up with all sorts of things. This bunch doesn't have a lot of large leaf. Long stems, but not large leaf, but. Okay. These are popular. Sometimes I just take the creel as well and put a hook on the back of it so it could hang on the wall and fill it as one might fill a basket of flowers, which is sort of fun as well. All kinds of things you can do. You just need an imagination. That's the easy part. I've always said that to people. Coming up with the ideas are easy. Although this, you know, not that I consider this work. This is just total fun, play, enjoyment medicine sometimes it's just the medicine when you're having a bad day and you just want to get creative and take your mind off things as well art is good for that art therapy absolutely okay I'm really lifting these right off because this comes off the wreath so much so we can really add a lot of depth to this. That's a fun piece and it's sort of just super natural with its split stem. Don't put it right here. Easy enough to put right in the, all the way through, right into that foam, I mean, uh, Straw base. Now we're going to put some up in this direction. Switch hands. The end of summer is always sort of exciting. Um, being that it's harvest season of the botanicals, so there's always a lot of new product on the market by August because it's, you know, in fresh this year's crops, which are nice. You have to wait. Hydrangea, I use a ton of hydrangea, but unfortunately, if I don't buy it in bulk in the fall, in the, the fall of the previous year, it's limited until, you know, this time of year, September even. We need some longer Foliage. So I'm going to scoop behind me and grab another bunch and see if we can get something a little more with a little more length, even a little larger leaf. I'll be right back. Here we have it. Look at this. Oh, look at this. This is a perfect size. That's the kind of, that's the size we need, these really large leaves. So I'll ask you all, if you like what I'm doing, if you're enjoying these videos, would you kindly share them for me? Bring your friends. I teach fitness classes as well, and I always, it, it's sort of personal, you know, and I always say to the women, bring a friend, because it's going to make it much more enjoyable. We all need a little backup from our 
from our buddies. That is just gorgeous. This is gorgeous, gorgeous foliage. Okay, we're gonna bring a little more out here. A little more out here. The next city here. Seem to have trouble choosing. I guess this one's sort of curved, so guess where this is going? Right up around that right side. That pops open, but it's not going to. We just hang it on a wall. This is a nice one. Look at the, this. Here's an example of how foliage, all of it, takes on different colors. This is all from the same lot. I don't think it matters though because we're going to have so much other stuff on here. Now oh, that went right in and moved this piece here. Co-mingling on the inside of the reef base. I'm sort of partial to this. And we're not, wow, has a angle when we pinch those two together. So pinching is what we're going to do. I'm going to go up the side with the glue. Remember, never full trigger on little stems like this. We don't want all that excess glue more than the stems can hold. Because we know where it's going to go. A little bit of force right in there. Okay, now we're gonna bring a little bit up right up in here so it really sort of closes that off. Even though it's a circle, we don't care if it's a circle or not. It's not gonna look like a circle, you know, when we're done. It's gonna, in, in some cases like this, these wreath bases are really just a base, not designed as a circular wreath, more just a base to build upon. Ouch, got my fingers a little close to it, but it's bending a little bit, so. Okay, gonna hang sort of like that, just a little bit of an angle. This would be straight, right? But we're gonna hang it like that. So I'd like to see, even though there's not much of a line here to fall, but I'd like to see something go right up here. So I'm gonna see if I can get a really tall one right up there would also be a perfect place for a branch as if this was truly lying next to the riverbed. That's even a little short, but that's a nice one. So let's save that and put that on there. Let's put that on there. You can choose who wants to be used here. I don't know. None of them are super, super tall. Maybe this one. We'll braid it. Can always pull it out. Okay, here we go. Put my hands under there. We'll follow this line with some other foliage after as well. Okay, and now I'm gonna put this one on because it's just, it's just a nice piece of foliage and I wanna use it. would be fun is to when you do this is to have like at the very tip which I don't have any to show you but just to make it look really natural would be um you know if you found a piece of birch bark in the woods and you just peeled off the white the way you know sometimes you, you find just the little tiny strips that have sort of peeled away over time and they're just laying on the ground so nice to sort of visualize this create the picture in your mind of what it might, that's another lovely piece, what it might look like, you know, if you sort of stumbled upon it in the woods. And try and recreate that vision. I mentioned um, on a video recently that I have this taxidermy pheasant that I want to work with, but I need a, you know, the perfect piece of wood to mount it to. Even though they're 
um, what do they call them? Upland birds, I guess. But I feel like it needs to, I can't just put it in grass, although that's probably more of its natural environment than driftwood or something. Okay, it might be close to done for the foliage for this moment. I'm gonna put this guy on. Sometimes it's just the fun little playful ones that catch my eye. Come on, go in there. Please cooperate. Okay, here we go. I might have messed that up a little bit. My goodness. Think, oops. This one might need to go in that direction a little more. Let's leave it and we'll play with the next layer, okay? Let me pull this up and we'll put another quick layer on and then And I'm going to make it really natural with this chartreuse green color. And big product. So we're going to put big pieces on. And I think it's a good idea that we create a stem. That glue stuck on my finger. So there's our stem. We're going to have our wire cutters. Tape it off just to hold it tight. I might even. That guy just doesn't want to stay on, so I'm going to trim him off. Okay, I'm going to put a little glue on it. I'm really going to, I'm not pushing it um, far in because we really want the botanical to be at the same, you know, in and out, but a lot of on the same level as this. Otherwise, they'll get lost and this will sort of stick out and the, um, the perspective will be all wrong. So I'll do a few and then show you so you can better understand. Make a little stem for it. No, oh, maybe I can tie that little loose one in that we trimmed off. Why not? Why not? Okay, let's get this guy in here. These are just, these actually are little wood stems rather than the covered wire. And pierce, pierce that um, plastic that's covering the big This one has a nice thick stem and you can see how this is nice and tight so we don't have to fuss with that. I'm gonna put it right over here, make it big, full, chunky. This is a beautiful piece. It's big though, so I'm gonna split this one off there. And that's how sometimes you can get a little you know, bang for your buck, as they say. Cut that, it's nice and not, nothing's loose, so that's good to use. We're gonna make this nice and thick. So we're gonna put three large clumps on here. Let's move the foliage so you don't burn your fingers and these three we're going to clump together but we're just of course we have to make a stem as you already know that is a good one it's a long one so i'm gonna just cut it right now tape it off so i have worked with a ton of um vintage materials creating what i you know sort of a theme wreath um, over the years, you know, it went from gardening themes that had old watering cans and tools and uh, to, goodness, I've done musical instruments from saxophones and clarinets and old cellos. I did a whole series of old cellos many, many years ago. I was doing a show in Rhode Island and uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I guess it was Rhode Island. I don't know. Rhode Island or Pennsylvania. I can't remember. It was so long ago. Anyway, this woman came in my booth and she loved my work and she bought a couple of pieces and she said, you use a lot of instruments. And I said, yeah, when I can get my hand on them. And she said, well, my dad just recently passed away and he ordered, um, 
owned a music store and he did a lot of repair and we have a bunch of cellos and I'd love to if you want them some of them are damaged but if you want them please come get them so that night after the show I met her at her dad's place I bought I think seven or eight cellos huge some of them damaged you know frets were gone some had the wood was damaged seven of them for dirt cheap I used every single one of them in work, like some on wreaths, some I covered with botanicals, some I smashed holes in and used it as a base, and I sold them all. It was just, they were fabulous. Anyway, my point being, talking too much, my point being is, run with your imagination. Trust in it. Okay, see how big they are? Big, powerful, boom, because this is big. Had we put just little tiny ones on, it would not have read so uh, this the perspective just would have been been off. This is all you would notice. So again, this is the focal point, and we want this to be the feature. But we have to understand that the perspective of all of the other botanicals lends itself into this. Okay. So from here, we're going to find something else fabulous to put on. And let's do. Where's our pod? These again are a big pod. So we'll start with these. Lotus, these are the water lily pods. They're already on wood stems. And so this is the stem that we can, goodness, I can't even cut it with those scissors. Repurpose. That one is, this is what they do. So where the original stem is dried or fall, how these fall off, I really don't know. Um, but they, that, they just slide that in. And sometimes they don't glue them, which delays the design project. So I'll just put glue and set it over there, and we'll go grab another one. And hope that it's on there, which it is. So let's just start right over here. I'm going to just cheat, poke my, a hole with a point of the scissors, put some glue on this, up and down the stem. Oh, that one's a little loose too. A little extra there, just so the pod won't, you know, if you're moving it or whatever. Okay, be careful because I have glue up under there, and if you do that, just watch your finger so it doesn't drip. I'm just going to put it right in that Hold it be just there. Nice and tight to this, okay? Every single one of these are loose. I don't understand it. This one's broke right off. Jeez. Workmanship these days, I can tell ya. No dry in there, but you just have to be careful, you know, obviously, with hot glue. So these are too big to just put two together. If they were tiny, we could get away with it. So we either do three or we spread them out. I'm gonna follow these clumps and sort of do that. I might come back and put three here. But in the meantime, we're gonna put one up there. Poke a hole. And we're cutting these stems long so they come out to meet the height of the um, fishing creel off the base. So not quite a straight line. It goes out and it goes in. Remember how we sort of do that just like when you're doing a perennial garden or, you know, if you, especially if you're doing the same specimen, like say you have a big garden and you're doing all, oh, I don't know, you bought eight or ten echinacea, you know, you wouldn't just put them in a straight line you'd put like five and then four but it ends up looking like a zigzag i still want to spread that a little tighter okay i'm a little unprepared here not paying attention i'm talking too much put my hole in ouch sometimes i'll show you this when that 
twig, I'm gonna go in this way. When that, when the um, stem is loose, <laughs> and it's that's what happens. It poke, it comes right up through. So you then have to hold onto the stem, hold onto the stem, and pull the lotus pod forward because you don't want to see that stem in through there. Those should be hollow. There. Okay. So we have only three more. So I'm going to cluster three in one area. I'll leave those onesies alone. This is easier. I'm going to take that out. I'm going to put a little tiny, tiny tab of, dab of glue there. And then I'm going to put that back in. Let it dry for a minute. We're going to go back to this one since we glued him earlier. And let's put this guy right up in there. Glue. I don't think I found where the scissors were. Oh, there we go. I think I scattered them. So we're going to create one more over here. Pull this out, let the sky dry. Wow, we. Put this one in. Yeah. Doesn't take long. I'm going to push him outside because I'll show you what we're going to do here. Let's see. Let me just visualize where he's going to go first. It's a little wobbly. Oh, be careful. We don't need my burning fingers on the video. straight line. Okay. I'd like to put this one here, but I almost feel like it's getting a little too heavy on the brown. So let's do that. I'm going to clean up the bench, put a pile over here. We'll come back and we'll finish this. Okay. Sounds fun. Thanks.